I think a lot of times people are like, oh, there's trees, it's nice. But if they stop to measure and try to figure out what the species is and such, then they are a little more familiar with that tree and it's a little more important to them. Once they know what it is, they'll start noticing, oh, hey, that, that tree down the street is just like the one in front of my house. And doing that will uh, it increases uh, knowledge and helps people understand better what um, our urban forest is like. Condition looks pretty good to me. It looks like it's well taken care of. Mm -hmm. I was really impressed on how well it went. We got I think about 200 trees on there. So can we use the power of um, what we like to think of as community foresters to help us fill in those gaps and the gaps in the rest of the city and district? The, the light green dots indicate the information that we have for all of the trees and the dark green dots are the ones that reflect. Our goal is to try to get as many of the trees out there as possible logged onto the map. And we estimate there's probably about 700,000 in all different parts of the city, in the parks, in people's backyards, in private property. Um, so the more information that we have about the trees that are out there, the more we can use that information to make good decisions for the future. Along the Fisherman's Wharf, so that's kind of exciting because there's not much out there. This is kind of cool. This is, I can't tell if that's up to date or not. Oh, it's not that good. I mean, even in a complicated wedding, it's a lot of work. Are you married? Yeah. Yeah. And I tap to enter to add the tree location, and I can zoom in here. I can also switch to the hybrid view that makes it a little easier to know what's going on and it looks to me like a red maple. So I'm gonna go down to that area and say red maple. As soon as anyone enters a tree, as long as we know what kind of tree it is and how big the trunk is, we use data from the U.S. Forest Service's Center for Urban Forest Research. The scientists there have created a model that takes the species and size information and estimates those benefits. And they give us both a number, so we can tell the pounds of carbon dioxide or pounds of air pollutants, or the number of kilowatt hours of electricity that the tree is helping us save. But we can also put a dollar value on some of those things. So we know what a kilowatt hour of electricity costs. It's right there in your power bill. And if we multiply those two things together, we can say this tree is saving us X number of dollars per year by shading us or by blocking in the winter winds. Five top varieties of those. Mm -hmm. Magnolias, and there, there are a lot of more, more common. There may be 22 species that reflect. Uh, trees uh, in, in cities really help us. Uh, they're almost the, the lungs of the city. They filter out particulates, and in our city we have a fair amount of uh, dust and airborne uh, particles. And, and I think we always think we have fog and lots of wind, and well, yeah, it blows it to the Central Valley. If we could intercept it, uh, in our urban areas before it gets to other neighborhoods, other parts of the state. I think everyone would be healthier. Wrap this around here. And it's just over three inches. I need to edit this. it next. I'm going to set the species. It is a Japanese blueberry. 